welcome back to this class. So, when I concluded the last class, I told you that we will be talking about the challenges of direct contact of the cell or any biomolecules with the electrode. So, today we will first discuss this and then we will conclude the class what will be the next generation problem. So, the title will be electrode surface and interaction with biological cells and that itself will help you to understand what will happen in the case of chemicals. So, this is also called in short cell electrode interface. So, when we talk about a cell electrode interface, let us draw the interface. If this is the electrode surface, we are talking about and here you have a cell growing. This is your cell and this is your electrode surface. Now, if you amplify this part, what will you observe is that cell surface is not uniform. The way we draw it is never like that. It is like this. and the electrode is far more plain and like this. So, now when I am magnifying this whole thing, now you realize the contact points are very few. So, this is one contact point, this is another contact point, this is another contact point like that. So, when the contact points are so few, the signal fidelity will be less, there will be less signal which will come through. So, now this is a huge fundamental challenge. How? So, the question which is to be asked is how we can modify electrode surface because you cannot modify the cell surface. Okay? because that is not in your control. How we can modify the electrode surface geometry and this is primarily we are talking about extracellular recordings which are non-invasive ones. Geometry to pick or collect maximum signal, right. This is our target. So, if you look at this picture, the first thing you may think of, if we could make the electrode rough, instead of this, if the electrode surface. So, your first configuration was this, right. and electrode surface is something like this, right. Now, if you could make the electrode surface itself something like this. So, that what will happen? The cell will possibly sit like this. So, you are making, you are making the electrode surface more rough, altering electrode surface. This is one of the technological advancement, which several groups does across the world. 
they alter the electrode geometry itself. This is one approach. The second approach is, say for example, you do not want to do like this. So, what you can do out here, you can change the interface about something like this. You have electrical connector, say for example, electrical interface you are creating. Say, electroactive polymers you are putting out there. So, this is all part of the electrode, something like this. And the cells are now almost like this. Let me redraw this one. Say, for example, if this is the electrode surface, you are growing some kind of a polymer on top of it, which is electroactive polymers, and the cell is as usual going like. So, in a way what you are trying to do is that you are trying to use these electroactive polymers which are on top of the electrode to increase the point of contact of picking up maximum signal. And all these technologies holds true when you are using biomolecules for sensing right. This is another way. So, first we talk about when we change the electrode surface itself we will made it more rough. rough electrode. Okay. Now, we are talking about electrical brushes. It is like a brush, like toothbrush you know, something like toothbrush. The cells will get trapped into it and imagine each bristles of the toothbrush is electroactive polymers. Mind it, when we are talking about all these kind of things, you have to take into account, they all should be bio compatible. Without the bio compatibility, you will not be able to integrate this kind of things. The third thing is another interesting thing where you form a electroactive sponge coating something like this. And this is a flexible coating you are putting on top of this. And such coating will help the cell to adhere to them like this. These kind of spongy ECM is another way how you can alter the cell electrode interface. So, you see there are multiple strategies, these are just few and there are many other strategies, but I am just telling you the simplest one. So, first of all rough electrode electroactive brush. Now, we talk about spongy ECM. A very similar thing spongy ECM, you can look for a very recent paper in biomaterial science on tendon mimetic. And look for this particular paper, Biomaterial Science, which was published in 2023 by Hickman Group. You can look for this paper, something like a very similar strategy which was followed here, okay. A tendon mimetic study for skeletal muscle and cantilever. You may refer to this particular paper, it was by 
Jean Guin and Hickman, a two authored paper. It's a very beautiful paper where you will see these kind of strategies which have been followed. Like, but you have to realize these are the strategies which are being followed in order to minimize the loss of current. Because if there is no contact, there won't be, you won't be able to record anything. Now, electrodes have their own set of limits. The next generation in this game is if we could integration of integration of excitable cell with semiconductor. So, in other word that will be in a truest sense a neuron electronic interface. 1990s, there was a paper which came from Germany on integration of field effect transistors. In short, they call it FETs. So, it was ionic FET and ISFET they call it field effect transistor integrating it with excitable regius cells which were derived from the leech. This was a very interesting paper where when we talk about the semiconductor devices, we are talking about the gates, right? N, P, you guys remember N and P types, you know, one electron deficient, one electron excess, and the flow of electron, and likewise, if you guys remember those old pictures. Now, think of two gates here, and these are the gates which are part of the And then dimension wise, these are semiconductor gates. Now, what are field effect transistors are? If underneath the gate, if the field changes, okay, if the electric field changes, there will be a flow of current. That is all you need to remember. So, say for example, if you have a gate lying here like this and a gate lying here like this. And these dimensions we are talking about are extremely, extremely small. So, this is gate 1, gate 2. Now, if there is a change in field across this, any change in field potential. You will observe a flow of current, right. This is the basis of what we termed as field effect transistors. Field is affecting the transistor activity, change in electrical field. Now, this 1990 studies, what actually they did is, now we are talking about the electrode which is in millimeters. Now we are talking about gates which you cannot even see through your eyes. Now they made a transistor like this. This is all microfabricated. And these are different gates. Now, 
you allow a excitable cell to sit on top of it. This is a single cell and the dimension of the gate. So, when we are, I was drawing, I was telling others, this cell, this is the electrode, the single electrode, but here you see how many gates are there. There, are, this is just physically I can draw that much, there may be many more gates because the dimension is very low. Now, the very moment the cell is excited, somewhere or other, you are exciting this cell, what will happen? At that every point, there will be a change in the electric field, because there will be mobility of the ions. The very moment there is a mobility of the ions, these gates will sense it. Now, in order to develop it, so what is happening to understand, so there are levels of it. Now, underneath what you see this black part, so you could see the white part. So, underneath is this black part where the gates are present, all the gates are underneath. Then there is an insulation layer which is the white part and on top of the insulation layer, the cells are present. So, whenever there is a change, so that in through that insulation, you are not allowing the fluid to come in touch with the, with the gate, right. But whatever changes are happening here, it should be sensitive enough that the gate should be able to sense it. If the gate senses that change, then you will see a current. And this is in the history of humankind, the first marriage of electronic component with neuron. This was a landmark discovery, though this technology at the cellular level is a still kind of not very popular, because there are a lot of challenges which has to be overcome because before this technology takes the center stage, but this is exactly is where we are moving. We are trying to now integrate, because we wanted to bypass this whole problem of cell electrode interface. The cell electrode interface is a big challenge, because first of all, if you look at the dimension we are talking about, this is a huge, so there is a huge cell sitting on top of this. Now, if you could go down from this electrode dimension, if you come to the gate dimension, that is like 1000, 2000 times, like here in this particular position, you could have at least 100 or 200 gates, which could be accommodated and each gate is acting as a sensor element. So, the amount of signal you can gather from integrating electronics with the cell is different from a electrochemical system. So, that is where is the real challenge, how we could have a technology which is economical and which will help us to get maximum output from the cells. And if in future, we are successful, we will be able to integrate it into directly into the brain or in the body in a way that that electronic system is exactly giving us the real time data from it. So, we are not implanting electrode, we are implanting a semiconductor chip out there. So, now by the reverse route, if we look at it out here, what we are talking about now you can actually synthetically do a very interesting thing. So, when we are talking about the chip here, where there is a gate and you change the voltage, if there is a change in the voltage across the cell. So, that means, you are changing the field, electrical field and that is sensed by the gate. Now, Think of a situation when you synthetically change the gate voltage that you can do externally, you should be able to or you change the field potential, then you should be able to do a reverse experiment 
you can see how the electrical activity is happening on the cell and of course, from the top using a patch electrode you can monitor it. So, in our shell we are heading for two dimensions at this point. One where there is a lot of research which will be happening in human on a chip platforms. On the other hand, there will be a smaller teams which will focus on integrating cells with electronics and the whole field of biosensors, especially in the biodefense is heading for both these routes because first of all we need lot more detection tools at multiple level at the level of compounds at the level of molecules at the level of cell at the level of whole animal. So, well human on a chip will be a replacement of animal systems, but then at the level of precision lot of work will proceed towards integrating electronics with cell. So, at the level of field effect transistors especially ion selective field effect transistors there will be tremendous amount of work which will be happening in next 50 years, where things are going to take a very new dimension in the years to come. So, with this I will close this class and looking forward that we both as me sharing my journey with you guys and you people listen to this, we both have enriched ourselves. Thank you.